We remain here in Detroit, just 48 hours removed from the biggest party of the summer, SummerSlam, and what an electrifying night it was in Ford Field. But tonight, Monday Night Raw emanates from Little Caesars Arena in Detroit, Michigan, and we kick off the road to September 14th in Montreal at no mercy. Who is going to be next in line to become the number one contender for the WWE Championship? Well, as announced yesterday afternoon, a number one number one contender's eliminator kicks off right here tonight. Two sets of triple threat matches. LA Knight, Karrion Cross, Baron Corbin in your main event. AJ Styles, Dijak, and Brunson Reed kicking us off in moments. The winners move on to the number one contender's match next week on Raw. But who left SummerSlam 48 hours ago as the WWE Champion? We witnessed the rematch from Money in the Bank as the prize fighter Kevin Owens stood toe to toe with the Second City Saint, CM Punk the Gold was on the line. These two men certainly did their homework for their previous battle. Reversal at the reversal. New wrinkles added to each of their arsenals. Emptying the tanks to an absolute end and throwing everything they had at each other. CM Punk ultimately retaining the WWE Championship and dare I say, maybe even a bigger story, gaining the respect of Kevin Owens after the war they have had throughout the summer. CM Punk still on top as the WWE Champion. SummerSlam was eventful 48 hours ago, but the road to no mercy begins right here tonight. The following contest is an elimination match. Making his way to the ring from Black Forest, South Australia, weighing in at 300. And 30 pounds, Bronson Reed! Bronson Reed marches down the aisle, hot off the heels of a victory. Last week on Velocity, exclusively on TikTok. The big Aussie, one-on-one -on -one with one half of the OCs, Machine Gun Carl Anderson. Physical matchup on both sides of the bell. Anderson putting up a fight. But in the end, Bronson Reed continues to impress. Big time victory on Velocity exclusively on the No Nation Gaming TikTok channel. Will Bronson Reed be able to ride that momentum into this triple threat affair here tonight? Bronson Reed coming in red hot off a victory. However, one of his opponents looking to bounce back after a disappointing loss 48 hours ago in Ford Field. Jack coming up short in the Detroit street fight to the megastar LA Knight. LA Knight will try to ride that momentum into his main event clash later tonight. But as for Jack, a chance to bounce back in the highest way possible in the midst of this triple threat eliminator. And his opponents first from Worcester, Massachusetts, weighing in. Well, the month of September certainly already setting up to be a notable one. Saturday night, September the 7th, the No Nation Gaming Channel member exclusive WWE live event. Saturday night, September the 14th, No Mercy, live from Montreal. One week later on Saturday night, September the 21st, Madison Square Garden, Queen of the Ring. This matchup tonight, a chance for these Raw superstars to move one step closer to challenging CM Punk for the WWE Championship in the middle of the Bell Center in Montreal on the 14th of September. You don't want none. And representing the OC from Gainesville, Georgia, weighing in at 218 pounds. Well, in terms of singles action, AJ Styles has not seen defeat since the month of May. Just a few weeks ago, picked up a victory right here on Raw against LA Knight, thanks to an assist from Dijak. 
One week later, Dijak stood alongside the OC in an eight-man tag team matchup. LA Knight, DIY, and coincidentally enough, Bronson Reed were the victors on that night. A lot of history between these three men in recent weeks on Raw, including Bronson Reed scoring a one-on-one -on -one victory over Dijak. Tonight, all three of their paths cross again. No love loss, opportunity at an all-time high. The phenomenal AJ Styles looking to move one step closer to no mercy and what could be a legendary collision with the best in the world, CM Punk. I'm sure AJ Styles has something to say about who should be called the best in the world around these parts. Nonetheless, it's the first of two three-way dances here this evening. Elimination style, no countouts, no disqualifications in these type of matches. Pinfall or submission, the only way to be eliminated. Last man standing will be the victor, and we'll move on to next week right here on Raw. Still to come in your main event. The Harbinger of Doom carrying Cross, somebody he's got a lot of history with, and Baron Corbin alongside the megastar Alley Knight, the opposing triple threat match this evening. With Dijak, Brunson Reed, and AJ Styles kicking things off in the highest way possible. Certainly a contrast of styles between these three men, but one thing they all have similarities in is their ability to take things to the sky. And that even includes Brunson Reed, who showed last week on Velocity he is full of agility and certainly full of guts, willing to take things to the air if need be. AJ Styles, a former WWE champion in his own right earlier this year, was a part of the SmackDown brand, it was the United States champion. Ever since he came to Monday Night Raw, he is in pursuit of championship gold. Tonight, an opportunity for AJ to try to move one step closer. No mercy next month in Montreal. Brunson Reed, somebody who is extremely familiar with CM Punk. They've had not one, not two, but three encounters throughout the summer already. None of them being for the championship. If Brunson Reed can survive this eliminator over the next two weeks, CM Punk is going to be put in a very interesting spot come no mercy. Dijak may be the unpredictable superstar in this equation. Coming up short against LA Knight in the Detroit Street Fight back at SummerSlam. Huge opportunity for Dijak to bounce back here tonight, but AJ Styles ruling the ring at the current moment. Taking down Reed off the Pele. AJ dodges Dijak that time. The phenomenal one did not make the trip to Little Caesars Arena just to come up short. Also still to come tonight. The brand new WWE Women's Champion, Cora Jade, set to go one-on-one -on -one with Piper Niven. Hot off the heels of cashing in her Money in the Bank contract, we will show you and tell you all about it. Later tonight here on Raw, the generation of Jade has begun. Cora is in the house and in action here in Little Caesars Arena. Very unpredictable, our triple threat matches. You have to have eyes in the back of your head, which is obviously easier said than done. So hard to get sustained momentum in a matchup like this, but in quick instances, you certainly can. Positive of this kind of matchup here tonight is an elimination style. You don't have to necessarily keep your eye on each and every pinfall that you are involved in. These two superstars are going to have to be put by the wayside in order to get a decisive victory here tonight. Hudson Reed taken outside momentarily. I'm sure AJ Styles would love to knock off Reed after Reed knocked off Carl Anderson. Last week on Velocity, AJ Styles' ribs gonna be crying for mercy. Off the senton, but Styles still in this matchup. Hudson Reed heading to the top, could be looking for a tsunami. AJ Styles not looking to allow it. Meanwhile, Dijak taking fullest advantage of the rules, just like he did in the street fight at SummerSlam. However, Dijak, hoping and praying for a different result, uses that chair to get rid of Styles momentarily. Almost defeated Brunson Reed. And Reed's agility being used against him. Great strength shown by Dijak. And he almost had the big Aussie from the East taken down. My goodness. Man, pinfall or not, Dijak giving you a moment to remember here on Monday Night Raw. But Brunson Reed dropping Dijak with an air raid crash variation. Dishing the punishment right back as AJ Styles sits idly by. Dijak now the one, hoisting the shoulder off the canvas. 
And what a great way to kick off Monday Night Raw tonight. Opportunity is in the air. 48 hours removed from the biggest party of the summer. Styles at the springboard. AJ with his eyes locked on Brunson Reed. Did not see Dijak coming his peripheral. Maybe he did. AJ Styles did a great job multiple times throughout this matchup. And dividing and conquering. Brunson Reed taken out. However, Dijak takes advantage of a well-timed distraction and AJ Styles goes down. As we talked about a few minutes ago, all three of these men have been entangled in a series of battles one way or another in recent weeks on Monday Night Raw. So ultimately fitting the three of them clash here tonight in the midst of this WWE Championship Eliminator. AJ Styles, calf crusher locked in on Dijak. Dijak's foot may be underneath the bottom ropes from our lack of point of view, but of course, no rope breaks in this kind of situation. Dijak, usually you're saved by the ropes, but in this case, no saving to be found. Bronson Reed, now the one instituting the steal. Never turn your back on somebody with the size and stature and the attitude of the big Aussie. Now a cover on Styles looking for the first elimination of this contest, not just yet. Dijak now taking advantage of Bronson Reed's back being turned, and that is why these kind of matches so difficult. Brain buster by Styles on Dijak into the cover. He's out of here. AJ Styles with a brain buster on Dijak on top of all the offense that has been dished out throughout this matchup on top of the fact that Dijak was knocked out with a BFT 48 hours ago in Detroit. We are now down to two. AJ Styles and Big Brunson Reed. The winner of this matchup moves on to the number one contenders bout next week on Raw. We will find out who their opposer will be in tonight's main event. AJ Styles has got Brunson Reed down, but can he get him out? Four good, double stacking on the knees. Under the cover, goes the head of the OC, but big Brunson Reed has had his back up against the wall before and has fought back from less. Right in a little bit of distance, that's some of that agility being shown. And now the strength! My God! Styles damn near sent through the ring off the power bomb, but AJ Styles still alive. And it's opportunities like this where you push yourself a little farther. A series of matches, a series of victories, and you find yourself opposing CM Punk at no mercy. Easier said than done, but who's to say one of these men ain't gonna be the number one contender? Bronson Reed, series of suplexes. Styles in the corner now, looking worse for wear. Powerful maneuvers by the big Aussie. Bronson Reed looking to close the gap. Nobody home off the splash. And a kick. AJ Styles got the hell out of Dodge just at the last second. Better be thanking his lucky stars as Bronson Reed rolls to the outside, worse for wear, and he might not know where he is right now. Might have unintentionally Knocked his own breath out of his own lungs, but AJ Styles was not there on the delivery of that splash. Nonetheless, Styles, dare I say, making a smart maneuver, not rushing into action here, allowing Brunson Reed to come to him. Never mind! Brunson Reed was looking to implore that Singapore cane. Styles wanted none of it. Styles hustling up, taking down the big man at ringside. Brunson Reed might have made a ill-timed decision. Phenomenal forearm by Styles. Into the cover. AJ Styles is on his way to the number one contenders matchup next week. AJ Styles going two for two, eliminating Dijak, eliminating Brunson Reed, and now he awaits the winner of later tonight's triple threat main event. Well, what did we say earlier? 
AJ Styles has not lost a singles matchup since the month of May. Now picking up this triple threat victory tonight. If he can ride this momentum in the next week, I don't care who's opposing the phenomenal one. We may be looking at CM Punk's opponent come the 14th of September. The time has finally come. The Queen of the Ring tournament will commence next Monday night on Raw, but who is gonna be involved in this tournament? 16 women will compete, and the bracket to be revealed on the No Nation Gaming YouTube channel this Saturday. But we wanna take you back to this past Saturday at SummerSlam in Ford Field. The EST, Bianca Belair, one on one with the Nightmare, Rhea, Bloody Ripley, and of course, the WWE Women's Championship was on the line. Rhea Ripley did her damnedest to set the precedent and be aggressive in the early part of this matchup. Some costly missteps from bell to bell, and Bianca Belair pulling out maneuvers we didn't know she had in her arsenal. Bianca overcoming Rhea and accomplishing the goal of winning the WWE Women's Championship. Unfortunately for Bianca, it was a short-lived celebration as Miss Money in the Bank, Cora Jade, arrived on the scene, realizing Bianca was in an opportune state, not at 100%. Don't hate the player, hate the game. This is what the Money in the Bank contract is all about. Bianca tried to fight, but in the end, she was jaded by Cora, and a new women's champion was crowned in mere moments. Congratulations to the new WWE Women's Champion, Cora Jade. Well, we are back inside Little Caesars Arena, still emanating from Detroit, Michigan on Monday Night Raw. And Piper Niven, win, lose, or draw, continues to find herself as one of the focal points of the Monday Night Raw women's division. And with the Queen of the Ring approaching, everybody looking to make their case. And here comes the new champ. Cora Jade has arrived with a new piece of hardware. And from Chicago, Illinois, the WWE Women's Champion, Cora Jade. Well, that's a sound like a broken record, but almost similar to Piper Niven. Win, lose, or draw, Cora Jade has continued to be on the rise here on Monday Night Raw for months and certainly started to turn some heads when she captured the Money in the Bank briefcase last month in London, England. Cora went, went on to go one-on-one -on -one against Rhea Ripley, who really threw down the gauntlet weeks ago in Cora's hometown of Chicago. Rhea Ripley stomped out the dreams of Cora on that night. But man, oh man, did Jade turn her momentum around in mere moments 48 hours ago at SummerSlam. From Money in the Bank contract to WWE Women's Champion. And now Cora is gonna find out firsthand what it's like to hold the gold and be in the line of fire. One-on-one -on -one against Piper Niven, somebody who has been chomping at the bit for championship opportunity for months here on Monday Night Raw. Fortunately for Piper, maybe even fortunately we should say, she has found herself alongside her compadres and Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville several a times in golf and battle with Becky Lynch and Bailey as of late. Last week on Monday Night Raw, Chelsea and Sonya picking up the tag team victory over those two individuals. And I'm sure Piper is now looking to ride their momentum into a singles win over the champion tonight. And you gotta believe if Piper Niven is victorious, well, she'll be knocking at the Cora Jade's door for a championship opportunity in near future. 
Easier said than done. Cora Jade has continued to be on the rise, continued to impress, and is not the champion today only because of Money in the Bank opportunity. She earned her chance into the ladder match last month. She outlasted five other superstars to take down the contract. And she was smart enough to pick her opportunity when the time was right. As much as Bianca Belair scratched and clawed and had a heartfelt moment at SummerSlam, and as much as Bianca deserves to be the champion today, Cora Jade played her cards right. That's what Money in the Bank is all about. Said it before, we'll say it again. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Cora Jade in trouble. My goodness! Destroyer! On the champion, Piper Niven out for destruction tonight on Raw. <laughs> My God, Cora Jade somehow able to get her wits about her. Champion's intestinal fortitude, but Piper Niven looking to soak in the pageantry of her work. That doesn't tell you Piper Niven is motivated to get victory tonight. I don't know what will. Wait a minute, Bailey's out here at ringside. Well, looming issues between Bailey and Becky, the line in the sand, and Chelsea Sonia and Piper standing on the other side of it. Bailey taking Piper's eye off the ball momentarily. Well, Piper and Evan certainly aided Chelsea and Sonia in that tag team victory last week. Looks like Bailey is trying to aid Cora Jade in her pursuit of it. Well, unfortunately for the champion, Piper and Evan still in this matchup. A little bit of entanglement with Bailey, seemingly not enough to keep down Piper Niven. At least for the moment. Piper Niven trying to shake off the cobwebs, get back inside the ring. But Cora Jade playing defense at the current moment. I don't know if that's smart by the champion to chase Piper to the outside. Piper's already dangerous as is. Add the surroundings of the squared circle and could spell disaster for the new WWE Women's Champion. Piper Niven taking down Cora Jane and just looking to assert her dominance. And look at Piper. She's not rushing. She's going to let Cora come to her. Piper Niven just going to establish herself in the ring and also get some R&R &R at the same time. Piper Niven is a veteran of the squared circle. And that was a veteran decision. And clearly it works out as she waits for Cora to come in and absolutely squashes her for the moment. Oh, wait a minute. Cora. Picks her right spot again. Catching Piper Niven with that double underhook DDT. Piper coming to roll and getting a taste of the generation of Jade. Big time win for the new WWE Women's Champion. Here is your winner, Cora Jade. Well, Bailey certainly playing a little bit of a factor tonight, but at the end of the day, oh, wait a minute. Rhea Ripley from behind, ambushing Cora Jade. Well, before Bianca Belair was cashed in on by Cora, it was Bianca who took down Rhea. I don't think Rhea gives a damn who's the champion. She just wants her title back. Typical actions, extremely on character for the Eradicator. Like it or not, the Judgment Day is coming back with a vengeance, and Rhea Ripley wants hers. Prepare for the most exciting 10 minutes, a fast-paced 600 seconds, and all the action you can handle. Coming your way, exclusively, each and every Wednesday, only on the Noah Nation Gaming TikTok. The superstars of Raw and SmackDown race to the finish line on Velocity. Competition at an all-time high that you won't see anywhere else. Scan the QR code, follow on TikTok, and don't miss a second of Velocity. Last year, 16 of WWE's best cruiserweights clashed in an eight-week tournament to decide who stood above the rest at 205 pounds and under. This year, we do it all over again. Sunday afternoons at 12 p.m. Eastern time, kicking off on September the 29th, 16 men 
representing SmackDown, NXT, and TNA Wrestling will participate in the 2024 edition of the Cruiserweight Classic. With the field more wide open than ever before, who will scratch and claw their way to greatness and be crowned the winner of the historic Cruiserweight Classic? Just over a month away from the kickoff to the 2024 Cruiserweight Classic, the tournament where this man got his start here in the WWE. It's Cedric Alexander in action tonight on Raw, and he is going to have his hands full as the Nigerian giant Omas approaches the squared circle. One of these days, we're going to get a, an opponent for Omas that actually matches his size. Well, as we get set for our next matchup, we want to remind you that this Wednesday on Velocity, SmackDown's Chad Gable looks to bounce back after a loss to Ludwig Kaiser last week. One-on-one -on -one with the other half of Imperium, Giovanni Vinci. That is going down only on Velocity, only on the Donation Gaming TikTok. Go ahead and scan the QR code. Be sure to hit the like and follow and never miss a second of the action each and every Wednesday on Velocity. We are here in Little Caesars Arena in Detroit, Michigan, just 48 hours removed from the biggest party of the summer, SummerSlam. The hangover being felt as we get set for action. Omos, one-on-one -on -one with Cedric Alexander. And I want to know how Omos keeps getting these lucky drawings, if you will, in terms of opponents. I don't mean to knock Cedric Alexander, but going up against Omos seems like a little bit of a mismatch. You know, we have seen Omos just steamroll over opponents left and right throughout the summer. A couple of weeks ago on Saturday night's main event, just tore through our truth And now Cedric Alexander drawing the unlucky stroll, and Omos is just licking his chops at the fresh meat they have brought to him tonight. Don't discount the efforts of Cedric Alexander. Any given day could be this young man's day. I just have a feeling this might be a little academic against the Nigerian Giant. Nonetheless, Alexander are going to give it a fight. A man who, as we mentioned, got his start in the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament, a tournament that returns September the 29th each and every Sunday for the eight following weeks. September going to be one hell of a month here in the WWE as Omas sends Cedric Alexander right into the ropes. Alexander loves to go flying, but not like that. And not like that either, just ragdolled from pillar to post by this colossal opponent that he faces off with tonight. You know, ever since Omos stood up against Brunson Reed several months ago and fell short against the big man, it's as if Omos is just satisfying himself with much smaller opponents. What a pick on somebody of his own size. Nonetheless, Cedric Alexander down. I don't want to count him out, but Omos may be nearing an academic victory. Alexander still in this. Don't discount the heart of a former tag team champion as well as a former cruiserweight champion. Cedric Alexander trying to give this match his all. If that's what you want to call, just getting sent right into the canvas by the big man. There's got to be somebody in the Monday Night Raw locker room who sizes up a little bit better to the Nigerian giant. Cedric Alexander is looking for an opportunity, certainly not going to deny an opportunity to take down the big man. Tries to create a little separation here. Look at Alexander starting to come alive. But Omos, much to the chagrin of this Detroit audience, taking the wind out of his sails. My goodness! Thunderous choke slam by the Nigerian Giant. Academic victory. Should expect nothing less out of Omos. Well, wait a minute here. Well, this matchup is 
clearly over, but Omos isn't finished. He's got Cedric Alexander, and he's sending him back inside the ring. You know, pick on somebody your own size for once. Cedric Alexander has already been defeated, was just sent into the mat with a thunderous choke slam a few moments ago, and Omos is rubbing salt in the wounds. Some superstar he is. All for what? To send the message? Everybody knows how big you are, how tough you are, and how you keep raking up victories. What's the point? Wait just a minute! Well, maybe there is someone in the Monday Night Raw locker room who can size up to the Nigerian giant Omos. For the first time since the month of February, the monster of all monsters, Braun Strowman is back. And I don't think Braun is gonna let Omos off the hook for the destruction he has caused to much smaller individuals. Watch out, Omos, a train's coming through. Braun Strowman has arrived on the scene on the roll after SummerSlam. And he's cleared off the announce table. Oh, don't turn your back on the giant. Omos trying to go after Braun, but Strowman levels him with a clothesline. Omos has been taken victories over anybody who lines up, but he cannot have been expecting this choke slam through the announce table. The monster of all monsters has arrived on the scene, emerging from the shadows. Braun Strowman is back on Monday Night Raw. Can't get enough universe mode? Well, now is your chance to secure a backstage pass to more universe than ever before. Become a Noah Nation Gaming Channel member and gain entry into monthly house shows that directly affect your episodic viewing of universe mode. Also, take a peek behind the curtain with behind the scenes updates, exclusive content to see how universe mode is brought to life each and every week. Hit the join button down below, become a Backstage Pass channel member, and get your front row seat to more universe than ever before. Well, a rivalry that has taken center stage on Monday Night Raw throughout the summer culminated just 48 hours ago, the eight-man tag team warfare as the Judgment Day stood alongside Seth Freakin' Rollins against an aligned bloodline, and what a fight it was. No countouts, no disqualifications, anything goes as long as the decision took place between the ropes, and as we talked about on Saturday night, all eight of these superstars pulling out their greatest hits from bell to bell and causing destruction all the way through. In the end, the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns throwing the final spear to the Intercontinental Champion, the Bloodline standing tall in the battle of supremacy at SummerSlam. We can tell you that next week on Raw, the enforcer of the Bloodline, Solo Sokoa, looks to handle his solo business. He has not forgotten about Damian Priest putting him through the announce table and sidelining the street champ several months ago. The Bloodline won the battle at SummerSlam. Solo looks to stand tall in a war next week. Coming your way on Saturday night, September 14th, Witness the aftermath of the biggest party of the summer, SummerSlam, as WWE and Noah Nation Gaming channel memberships proudly present No Mercy. No Mercy comes to you live from the Bell Center in Montreal, Quebec, Canada at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Don't miss championship flashes, personal battles, high stakes, and high rewards 
all on the line on the 14th of September at WWE No Mercy. Who is gonna move one step closer to the 14th of September at No Mercy? The following contest is an elimination match. Making his way to the ring from Los Angeles, California. Weighing in at 241 pounds, L.A. Knight! Hot off the heels of one of the damnedest street fights we've ever seen, 48 hours ago in Ford Field, victorious against his arch nemesis in Dijak. Less than two weeks ago at WWE Live for No Nation Gaming Channel members, the replay available now. LA Knight earned an opportunity to battle CM Punk for the WWE Championship. They went to war in the main event on that night. LA Knight just falling short of the finish line. But opportunity rears its head again. LA Knight looking to kick the door down and get one more go around with CM Punk. If and only if he can be victorious back to back weeks starting tonight. But it is going to be a tough task getting through the two individuals that oppose him in this triple threat elimination battle. The Harbinger of Doom, Karrion Cross has certainly brung nothing but destruction to Monday Night Raw and a variety of superstars over the last couple of months specifically. Ron Breaker, Mr. Money in the Bank himself, and Baron Corbin have felt the wrath of this man, his master game plan, and his physical actions over the last couple of months. Last week on Raw, the authors of Pain, Akam and Rezar, Weeks after their shocking return, aligning themselves with Karrion Cross, in ring action, picking up the victory over the Creed brothers. Baron Corbin and Braun Breaker, however, looking for their payback after the sneak attack a few weeks prior, turning the tables on the AOP. There is certainly a war brewing between Breaker, Corbin, and what Karrion Cross is calling the final testament. Something's got to give with that whole situation. However, tonight it appears that just another chapter will be written as LA Knight is wedged between Karrion Cross and Baron Corbin in the midst of this WWE Championship number one contender eliminator. And let us not forget how we kicked off tonight here in Little Caesars Arena. A phenomenal AJ Styles eliminating Dijak, eliminating Bronson Reed, and punching his ticket to next week in the main event of Monday Night Raw. But who will oppose the phenomenal one? That is the question that awaits an answer in this main event. Well, Baron Corbin and Braun Breaker were able to get the edge over the AOP last week, but Corbin has not forgotten about all the history with the Harbinger of Doom. Akam and Rezar just pawns in the game thanks to Karrion Cross. Corbin and Breaker have felt the brunt of it. What bigger way to stick it to Karrion Cross than knocking him out of title contention here tonight on Raw. Hey. You know, the interesting thing is Karrion Cross was the one who brought Baron Corbin back to Raw earlier in 2024. Fought side by side in an issue with the brawling brutes, but when Baron Corbin did not, no longer benefit, we should say, Karrion Cross, Cross kicked him to the curb, and Baron Corbin didn't take too kindly to that. Both men were chasing the Intercontinental Championship several months ago, really got in each other's way of winning the gold. Two men on velocity. Karrion Cross picked up the victory over Baron Corbin there. 
tried to move on, but Braun Breaker was involved in the situation thanks to the actions of the Harbinger of Doom, and Corbin and Cross have remained intertwined ever since. Certainly unfinished business between that array of superstars. But tonight, opportunity is the word of the evening, as LA Knight, as we said before, is wedged between the issues between Corbin and Cross. Only one man will battle AJ Styles in the number one contenders main event next week here on Raw. Who will it be? AJ Styles went two for two in eliminations earlier tonight. I'm sure whoever the victor is in this match would love to set the same precedent. Certainly could be a momentum builder. Carrying Cross and Baron Corbin are going at it right now. And this might be best strategy for LA Knight. Just trying to let those two men beat the hell out of each other as much as they keep their objective on one another, we should say, if we can get the words out. Certainly the hangover from SummerSlam is in full effect. Nonetheless, carrying Cross, taking down Baron Corbin. LA Knight takes down Cross. And just as we said at the top of the hour, sustained momentum, one of the most difficult things to find in a triple threat matchup. Corbin and Cross tearing each other apart would be best case scenario for the megastar LA Knight. Well, I am sure is still not feeling 100%. Last week on Raw was thrown through a car window and a windshield by Dijak. LA Knight was obviously able to get some retribution 48 hours ago at SummerSlam, but a toll taken on the internal body of LA Knight nonetheless. An opportunity arises like this. No shot the Megastar was going to sit idly by and watch it pass him. Aaron Corbin focusing on Cross. LA Knight can't help himself. Gets involved. Air Raid crash to Carrion. Into the cover. Goes for the elimination. You notice how Baron Corbin was just going to watch that happen. Was going to almost grin ear to ear. If Karrion Cross were to be eliminated at that time and try to take advantage on LA Knight, was not to be. Now it's Cross impressively taking out a much larger Baron Corbin. Man, Cross is level. Everybody's leveled each other with these clotheslines tonight. Must have been a discount here in Detroit. Bad humor aside, Baron Corbin, fair, Fireman's carry situation, dropping LA Knight in the corner, and he gets a knee for his troubles. Got to believe the phenomenal AJ Styles in the locker room watching this matchup, trying to scout whoever his opponent will be next week. On the other hand, the WWE Champion CM Punk hot off the heels of retaining his title against Kevin Owens at SummerSlam. Looking on at the four superstars left in this eliminator. And who could be his opponent at no mercy, whether it be one of these three superstars or Styles himself. Steel Chair and a Singapore Kane involved in this matchup, although they haven't played much of a factor. I'm sure after what LA Knight went through in the Detroit Street Fight 48 hours ago, he would love to ignore the plunder as much as humanly possible. If you did not see SummerSlam, you missed out on one hell of a street fight between LA Knight and Dijak. Hold that thought as Karrion Cross looking for that emphatic F10 on the Mega Star. Final Testament being written. Luckily, LA Knight able to get the shoulder up and roll on the hell out of Dodge momentarily. LA Knight really just ought to let Corbin and Cross beat the hell out of each other. At some point, somebody's going to go down. LA Knight 48 hours ago pulled out a damn Slim Jim. Biggest piece of meat I've ever seen inside of a squared circle. Out of BFT on top of that, he was coasting to victory. Obviously a different situation tonight. Carrying Cross beaten down on Baron Corbin in between the ropes. LA Knight, nice shot. Slingshots himself with a shoulder block. The Defiant once field it, dropping the elbow on the heart of Carrie Cross into the cover. Not just yet, you had to believe that was going to be it. Cross shocking us all. Aaron Corbin looking under the ring. LA Knight's just looking to inflict some punishment on the Harbinger of Doom. All three of these men continuing to fight. Unintentionally, Corbin and Cross might have just divided and conquered against LA Knight. But the Megastar is still into it. Now Corbin trying to pick the bones. 
Ball set into the corner. Corbin looking for some signature shots. Former Golden Glove boxer, one of the hardest hitters on roll. Aaron Corbin now out to stack the offense. Hey, it's one mega star. Could be looking for an end of days. LA Knight creates distance. Blood force trauma. Hits it where it counts. He's out of here. Corbin is gone. We are down to LA Knight and Karrion Cross, who will meet AJ Styles next week for the number one contendership. Cross attempt at using that steel chair goes by the wayside. LA Knight is fired up. This could turn out to be a banner weekend in Detroit for the megastar. Steel chair placed precariously at a second blood force trauma this time to the Harbinger of Doom. And it looks like we got ourselves a rematch from several weeks back. This time the stakes won't be any higher. LA Knight does as AJ Styles did earlier this evening. Double eliminations, last man standing. The road to no mercy is intensifying. Who's gonna move one step closer? Well, thanks to an assistance from Dijak, AJ Styles defeated LA Knight several weeks ago on Raw, but the game is being changed. Before our very eyes, next week in your main event, the phenomenal AJ Styles, the megastar LA Knight. The winner meets CM Punk for the WWE Championship, Saturday night, September the 4th. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, something's going on at the top of the stage. Can we get some cameras back in the arena? The hell's going on up there? Who the hell? Hey, that's Seth Rollins. What the hell? It's Damian Priest. Priest has got a steel chair and he just cracked it over the skull of Seth freaking Rollins. What the hell is going on? There's always been a partnership between Rollins and the Judgment Day. I guess after what happened at SummerSlam and those four men falling short, the Judgment Day is cutting their ties. Rollins trying to fight back. Damian Priest, I believe, has busted open Seth Rollins and has thrown his bloody carcass out here to Little Caesars Arena. I, I mean, I, Seth Rollins has had his fair share of disgusting moments himself. But that doesn't mean I condone this. Oh my goodness, Priest with Rollins in the air. Down he goes onto the stage, razor's edge. I gotta say I'm in disbelief. All the history, Rollins and the Judgment Day have worked side by side all summer long in their war against the bloodline. And Dominic Mysterio, you remember, was the one. He was the one pinned at SummerSlam. So I don't get why the Judgment Day, at least from my eyes, if I'm putting, if I'm painting the picture correctly, is blaming Seth Rollins for the loss 48 hours ago. Rollins is absolutely broken and beaten at the current moment. He's been busted wide open. Damian Priest uses a steel chair, hit that razor's edge at the top of the stage, and now is dragging his body down to the concrete. I understand Rollins has had his moments, but that does not mean this is okay. Oh no, Damian Priest south of heaven on the concrete floor. Much to the disdain of this Detroit audience. Damian Priest does not give a damn. The ties with Seth Rollins have been cut and the Judgment Day and their hostile takeover of Monday Night Raw may have just gone back to the drawing board with emphatic force.